morning and welcome to Godly Play. Come, join the circle. Get comfortable. Ah, getting ready feels so right. Hmm, getting our bodies ready, our ears and our eyes, our hearts. I'm so glad you're here today. I'm wondering who's with you in the circle this morning. It's exciting, isn't it, to have other people with us? Well, let's get started. Today, we are in the season of Easter. So we had the, our season of Lent and Easter Sunday, and now we're in the one, two, three, four, fifth Sunday of the season of Easter. So we're in these white times. So you might have noticed the Holy Family the, uh, was sitting on the white cloth today. So, there was once someone who did such wonderful things and said such amazing things that people began to follow him. And as they followed him, they wondered who he was. <laughs> they couldn't help themselves. They just had to ask him. And one of the times when they asked him who he was, he said, I am the light. Let's enjoy the light. I see the love of God in you, the light of Christ comes shining through, and I am blessed to be with you, O holy child of God. But this light didn't stay in that one place and in that one time so long ago, because he changed the light so it can be in all places and in all times. Watch as I change the light. You may be doing this at home. Whew, look at that. It's filling the room. And there, it's going to you so that everywhere we are today in godly play, this light will be with us. And when we leave godly play, that light will go with us. So, are you ready for a story? So today's story, we're continuing in the story of knowing Jesus in a new way. And have your Bibles with you, or later on if you wanna check this story, you can find at the very end of Matthew chapter 28 starting at verse 16 and it's also recorded in the Gospel of Mark chapter 16 right at the end verses 14 to 18 so check that out On the first Sunday, that Easter Sunday, the women were going to the tomb. They didn't know who was going to roll away the stone for them, but they took courage and they went and they took with them some spices to finish the burial. And on this first Sunday, we remember how when the women came to the tomb, the stone was already rolled away and inside, well, they were just the cloths that had wrapped the body. We remember how they ran back to the disciples to tell them the news and how the disciples did not believe them, but that how Peter and John jumped up and ran to the tomb. And when they entered the tomb together, they could feel Jesus's presence in his absence. But Jesus was gone, truly gone. 
They left and hurried back to the disciples and remember how Mary Magdalene stayed behind weeping at the mouth of the tomb and how she heard a voice asking, Woman, why do you weep? And when she looked up through her tears, she saw two men in bright shining white clothes. And they said to her, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's risen as he said. Go and tell the disciples to meet him in Galilee. And then we remember how she heard another voice say, Woman, why do you weep? And as she turned, supposing him to be the gardener, to ask him where they had taken Jesus' body, the voice said, Mary. And when he spoke her name, she knew it was he. She must have stepped forward to hold on to him because he said, No, you cannot hold me. I have risen, but not yet ascended. And how he disappeared. And Mary went running back to the disciples to tell them what had happened. On the second Sunday of Easter, we remember how two of Jesus' followers were heading away from Jerusalem towards Emmaus. And as they were walking, they were puzzling over all that had happened. And how a stranger walked up and started walking beside them and how they didn't pay any attention until he asked, What are you talking about? And they said, You must be the only person in all of Jerusalem who doesn't know what has happened these last three days. And the stranger asked, Why? What has happened? And how they told him about the cross and the empty tomb and how it had been so much. And how the stranger had said to them how they were foolish and slow of heart and began to open the scriptures to them. How Moses, through that God had used Moses to take the people out of exile in out of slavery in Egypt across the river into freedom and how God had guided them in their freedom and given them the Ten Commandments and how the prophets had come to them in exile from God to tell them that a child will lead them and that someone will die. As they were talking they had come to the inn at Emmaus and the stranger was about to go in and how they invited him to come in and, and enjoy some supper with them and how at that supper the stranger had taken bread, given thanks and broke it and given them, given it to them. And in that moment, they knew it was he known in the breaking of the bread and then how he disappeared and how they sat for a while and said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us as he was opening the scriptures to us? And then they ran back to tell the disciples in Jerusalem. And we remember how on the third Sunday in Easter, how the disciples were gathered in a closed room uh, in Jerusalem because they were afraid that the Roman soldiers might come and take them away as they had Jesus when a voice said, Peace be with you. And they looked around and it was he. At first they thought they'd seen a ghost, but then he showed them his wounds, he talked to them, he ate some fish, and then he began to open the scriptures to them as he had to the two on the road from Emmaus. And how then he had said, Peace be with you, and had gone. And we remember how Thomas had not been there that time. And when the disciples told them what had happened, Thomas said, I will not believe until I have put my fingers into his wounds. Thomas had doubt in his bones. But who could blame him? The disciples' minds were stretching and stretching to know Jesus in this new way. And how about eight days later, they were gathered again in that room the closed door and this time Thomas was with them and peace be with you Jesus was there and how Jesus walked up to Thomas and said here touch my wounds and how Thomas had fallen to his knees and said my Lord and my God and how Jesus had said to him you believe because you have seen and then looking around the circle of disciples, he said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. 
and then he was gone. And on the fourth Sunday in the season of Easter, we remember how the disciples went to Galilee as they had been told, and they went to rest near the Sea of Galilee because a lot of them had been there as boys and had fished with their fathers in the Sea of Galilee. And how Peter had jumped up and said, I'm going fishing. And the rest of them helped prepare the boat and how they pushed it out into the water and its sail filled with wind and how they felt like they were home with the smell of the sea and the feeling of the wind on their face and how they fished all night but caught no fish. And in the morning as the pink sky turned to blue, one of the disciples noticed that there was a stranger on the shore standing beside a fire. They could see the smoke that was coming out of the fire and they could see the red embers of the charcoal the voice said, have you caught anything? No, they said. The stranger said, cast your nets on the other side of the boat. Well, what did they have to lose? So they cast their nets on the other side of the boat. And as they lowered the ropes, they could feel the fish moving against the ropes as they were letting it down. But John wasn't paying any attention to the fish. He was looking at the figure on the shore and said to Peter, it is the Lord. Peter looked and jumped out of the boat, swam toward shore, and waded across the sand and onto the shore. And meanwhile, the disciples had turned the boat and headed it into shore as well. The stranger was cooking some fish on the fire, and as they gathered around the stranger, they knew this stranger was no stranger, but they were afraid to say, that they knew it was Jesus. He said to them, bring some fish. And they brought fish and he said, have some breakfast. And he gave them fish and bread to eat. And they talked. And he said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I do. Tend my sheep. Then again, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I do. Then tend my lambs. And again, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I do with all my heart. Then feed my sheep. Then he began to talk to Peter about how when he grew old, other people would have to look after him and that they would want him to do things even though he didn't want to do them. And later on the disciples thought that Jesus was preparing Peter for his death as an old man many years later in Rome. Then Jesus said, follow me. Peter got up and followed and they walked along the shore. Peter noticed that John was following a little way behind and asked, what about that man? Will he die like the rest of us? Jesus said, it is not for you to know such things. And then he was gone. And on the fifth Sunday in the season of Easter, we remember how the disciples had gathered in Galilee and they got together and they went up a mountain as they had been told and Jesus was already there. It was good to see him, though it was strange to be getting to know him in this new way. But they wondered, what were they to do next? What was going to happen next? And then they heard him talking. All Authority has given, been given to me in heaven and in, on earth. What was he talking about? They did not understand. But then he said something that they did understand, but they did not want to hear. Go everywhere. Tell my story, even this part. Show people how to be good disciples. Tell this story 
so that others may become part of it. Baptize people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The disciples were filled with dismay. This was too far to travel. It was too much to do. And then again to their dismay, he said, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And then he was gone. As the disciples walked back to Jerusalem, they realized that they no longer were going to be followers, but would have to be leaders, that they were no longer sheep, but needed to become shepherds. They had come home, but now they had to go out and bring others home. So I wonder, I wonder what you could bring today at your house to this story of Jesus on the mountain and commissioning his disciples to go out into the world. I wonder if anyone in your family has gone out to show people what a good disciple is like. I wonder if anyone's been a little dismayed at this whole idea of sharing the gospel with others. <laughs> I wonder who has those stories in your family. Well, it's time for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. See you next week.